All right, is everyone ready? I will call me to order. Ladies and gentlemen, please silence your electronic devices for this meeting. Here you hear me. This regular meeting is of the mayor and board of commissioners for the city of Lakeland is now open for transaction of business pursuant to adjournment. Any persons having business with this body, draw near, give attention, and you shall be heard. The Honorable Mayor Mike Cunningham is presiding. Please stand for the invocation of the pledge. Bow your heads. Father God, thank you so much for this time we can come together. Uh, and just help uh, have discussion and uh, just take in everything we can from our citizens and help govern this town, Lord. I pray you just give us the words to speak and help us to make wise decisions. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, So our traffic investigators working on that one 
uh, fled to trace location due to speed and ended location. The Sheriff's Office, we're going to continue to be vigilant in our neighborhoods. If you see anything suspicious, please continue to call us. Call us if our deputies can get there and we can do an assessment of the situation. And if we need to put extra patrols in any particular neighborhood, that's what we're here for. If you need our assistance on Neighborhood Watch or Neighborhood Association Program, please give us a call so we can be able to get our coordinator in there and to be able to help get a citizen more information on how to better protect the neighborhoods, better protect your property, and help us continue to bring those numbers down. That's all I have to report. Really quick, what's the best number? Is it the non-emergency number? Oh. Yes, sir. It's error code 901-379-7625. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant. Fantastic job. We appreciate you guys for sure. Especially with uh, setting up radar on Canada Road. I've heard a lot. I've got a lot of emails from residents, <laughs> and uh, it's good to see you there. People have actually slowed down. Yes, so that is great. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. City manager. I'll be fairly brief uh, this evening. I uh, wanted to remind folks and uh, the board about our upcoming service change on trash and recycling and take advantage of a full house again uh, because this is a big service change for us uh, to remind folks uh, about March 18th, uh, the week of March 18th and the week of March 25th. Uh, these, these two weeks will be kind of going undergoing a transition republic uh, we'll be picking up containers, um, so as they empty containers on their respective routes, their contractor will be following up, picking up the containers, so we ask residents to kind of keep their containers out of the street. Um, that same time period, our new provider, Team Waste, will be uh, kind of following the same route and delivering new the three new containers uh, to residents um, kind of following Republic, actually they're using the same same contractor will be uh, picking up and delivering uh, the new containers so that, uh, that that should go fairly well hopefully. And then Monday, April 1st is when Team Waste will actually start their new uh, trash service uh, for the city of Lakeland. Um, there will be one or possibly two weeks there that uh, Republic will be um, emptying the new containers. So if you're picked up on Monday the 18th, um, we will obviously continue providing trash service to residents. So Republic will have to finish out their last couple weeks potentially using the new containers. So they are aware of that and understand that. Um, so we ha we've had a number of calls from residents saying, well, what are, we, what are we gonna do with trash for that two week period if my containers picked up? And, um, before Team Waste starts. So trash service will continue um, with hopefully without interruption. The, anytime you go through a service change like this, it's, it's a pretty big deal and we understand that and recognize that. Um, the big service change for us is obviously the change of provider, but we're also changing a few things uh, and we want our residents to know about this. Solid waste, yard waste, recycling will all be picked up on the same day. Um, obviously there will be different trucks that will be providing these services. The same vendor will be doing it, however, and it will be the same day. So we won't have um, one day for solid waste and the next day for recycling. Um, so the collection period will be Monday through Friday. So there will be some minor uh, tweaks to the routes. Um, so we will obviously, once that map is finalized, which we're working on that right now, we will get that information out through our social media channels. Um, one of the things we talked about internally as a staff is because this is such a large change uh, from a service standpoint, um, we think it um, uh, has merit and has value to spend the resources and do a bulk mailing to all residents in the city of Lakeland, um, kind of alerting them of this change and kind of giving them a heads up of this is what's going to happen. It's going to be a simple postcard. We're not going to go in great detail. We're going to try to direct people to obviously our website with more information there, but we just want to um, 
inform our residents that this change is happening in that two week period. So we're going to be next week, those postcards will be going out, um, kind of alerting all the residents uh, of what to, what to expect in this next two week period. Um, also, as the new containers arrive, they'll be attached to that container. One of the containers will be a bag or a um, Ziploc, if you will, with um, a lot of service type information in it, um, including the, the, the route uh, map, uh, including a magnet uh, that we will provide that shows what is acceptable from a recycling standpoint and a little bit of PR information for, for team waste as far as contact information. So look for that attached to one of your new containers, uh, put it on your refrigerator, and uh, hopefully it's, it's a value uh, to our residents going forward. So between us releasing this information through our social media channels, on our website, through direct mailing, and through the um, attachment of this information on the actual container, we hope that the word will, will get out, people will understand what's happening, and uh, hopefully that will eliminate or leave uh, some of the phone calls that we've been getting here over the last week or 10 days. So we understand it's a big change and that's why we think it's, uh, it's, it's our resources are expended in this way. I think, um, I think there's merit to it. And I think it's something that, you know, again, typically we don't like necessarily doing bulk mailings because it's, um, we, we try to save the resources and steer people to our website. But again, because this is a big change, I think it's, it has value to go ahead and spend the resources to try to educate our residents effectively. One more thing I wanted to share with you, uh, Commissioner Wright and myself attended uh, last week the uh, Chamber, uh, Lakeland Chamber uh, monthly uh, luncheon. And I wanted just to highlight uh, for you an update on the St. Jude Dream Home. Uh, that was the, uh, the guest uh, presenter during the, the Lakeland Chamber event last week. Um, I was surprised to learn actually that uh, the house is um, uh, ahead of schedule with all this rain that we've had over the last few months. I thought uh, maybe their schedule would be impacted, but they actually programmed uh, a number of these type of rain days uh, in their schedule, so they're actually ahead of schedule. So. Tickets will be available uh, for the house. For residents that don't know, the house is actually being built across the street, uh, 5046 Adagio Lane. Um, Southern Serenity Homes is, is building the, the, the home. Um, the tickets will be available through St. Jude starting the end of this month. And then open houses will occur uh, from May 18th to June, through June 16th on Saturday and Sundays. Um, and then the giveaway or the, the drawing will be held on June 23rd, 2019, live on channel, uh, Action News uh, Channel 5. So they're planning on, again, selling 14,500 tickets at $100 each. And they did sell out early last year, so I'd encourage anyone interested to obviously support this great cause. Um, and then they're obviously continuing to look for volunteers. So it's, this is a big operation, as we all know. So manning uh, during, during the open houses, they're looking for volunteers to uh, be guides uh, on the open houses and, and be available uh, as resources. Uh, parking attendants, uh, they're looking for people to man phones as well. So if, if I did print out um, a number of pamphlets. Uh, if anyone's interested, they can grab one of those up here. We'll also put it on our, on our website as well. And then just to remind uh, the board, we have scheduled, and, and hopefully that's approved tonight, the budget calendar. Uh, so we tentatively have placed in the budget calendar a work session for our budget. Staff has been diligently preparing their respective budgets. Um, we will be presenting in front of you uh, for the first time on Tuesday, March 26th from five to nine, that's kind of what we have programmed. Obviously, we'll adjust as needed um, on the time, but uh, uh, please kind of mark that off in your schedule, and uh, we look forward to you know, having good dialogue on directions from the financial aspect. Of it. Obviously, and I've said this before, this is going to be one of your biggest uh, tasks as a, as a board to adopt a budget and do that on an annual basis. So 
It's not something that we take lightly, and I know it's not something that you take lightly as well. There's been a lot of effort on our side, and I know a lot of effort will be put in on yours as well, so we appreciate that investment of your time. So any questions from, from me? No, I just want to say thanks for uh, doing the bulk mail out on the, the garbage issue because I know there are a lot of seniors that don't have internet access and are, the web means nothing to them and they'll be the ones that will be calling and asking questions so for the sake of time for the staff's consideration I think that's an excellent idea to get that out to everyone just from an informational standpoint so I, I applaud you for doing that for sure. All right, let's move on to commissioner's reports. Got any recent meetings, so uh, we have a lot of stuff coming up. Yeah, we're here for yeah. that. So we have a lot of things coming up for the NPC meeting. Looking forward to that. Yeah, I did talk to Forrest tonight, and he said we got a full slate. So that's 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 good news. What are the meetings? On the calendar for me. It's okay. uh, two Thursdays. Yeah, not next Thursday, yeah. but Thursday we should be two Thursdays. We're going to be meeting. Next Tuesday, the parks and Okay, so no report for now because we're we're a week early on this meeting, so that is absolutely not good. Okay, let's move on to the public discussion phase. I do have several cards, uh, people who would like to speak, and I've always said I would give every citizen an opportunity to speak. Um, I just asked if you would approach the microphone, give us your name and address for the record. And then if you would please just try to keep it to two minutes if you can. Uh, just from a sheer time perspective, we have quite a few cards. Um, but I won't cut you off, I'll let you finish your thought. So uh, if you would, just uh, be aware of that. But I want you to have the ability to come up and speak. Uh, that's what we're here for. So let's start off. Uh, the first card I have is Mr. George Munchow. My name is George Munchow, address is 10150, <clears throat> Highway 70. Mayor and Commissioners, thank you for a few minutes of your time. I'm here again tonight to reiterate my position that I uh, am opposed to Resolution 1 of the intent to proceed with the due diligence on a capital outlay note of $38 million. I think we're premature on it a little bit. Uh, I certainly understand the need for it for the school and I'm not opposed to a school as many aren't uh, but I think we're just a little bit premature uh, with that. There's too much I think uncertainty of what the final final impact will be for the individual taxpayer. Um, I've heard all kinds of numbers. I think in one of the recent meetings uh, Commissioner Wright mentioned he'd like to keep it under two dollars um, but you know, if that were certain, at least we'd have something to go on. But at this point, I think there's too much uncertainty. I think we could um, come to a better, closer estimate for the for the public uh, when we get closer to that. Um, and we certainly don't want to incur any additional costs. Um, many folks, the additional costs, many litigation costs. Uh, many folks last the last meeting indicated, hey, if if we can't stop it here, you know, we go to litigation again. Uh, I, I hope that's not what's necessary because that's just another big tab for everybody and uh, not necessarily big winners out of that. Uh, so with that, I would urge the, all the commissioners to reconsider your position if you were for it before and uh, reconsider your opinion about it or at least postpone this action so we can uh, get further, more clarification and other developments and the tax base, meaning uh, retail sales and so on, come online. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Montreal. Uh Next will be James Lawrence. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, James Lawrence. Uh, 
lived in Lakeland full time since 2000, had owned property here for uh, probably 10 years before that. Uh, I'm here to speak on the bond. Um, I live at uh, 4184 Cedar Point Road on the Lake and Lakeland. We love to live in here, uh, but I uh, feel like we stepped into a mess with this bond. Uh, my wife uh, is a teacher uh, at Memphis University School and uh, has a lot of experience in dealing with students and their behavior and so forth, and we've discussed this uh, bond situation and the high school situation for hours and hours and still feel that it is a mistake for the city to go forward with this bond at the present time. In regard to that, I have written a letter to the uh, Comptroller of the state of Tennessee, Sandy, uh, Sandy Thompson, who is the uh, director of the Tennessee Office of State and Local Finance. Uh, Jeremy Thompson, I'm a citizen of Lakeland who wishes to add my comment to many others regarding a CO and bond being proposed by three members of the Lakeland City Commission. The issue is about funding to build a high school. <clears throat> These three commissioners have ignored the citizens' votes against the building of the school, which will only be based on repayment by a large amount of increased property taxes. I request your office review this proposal and render an opinion as to its effect on the future financial commitments of the city of Lakeland and its citizens. Thank you for your interest in this matter. James Lawrence. I have not received a reply to this uh, email as of this time, and will certainly uh, respond back to the city when I hear in regard to this letter. We have long agreed that Lakeland needs a school system. The school system that we have at the present time is operating wonderfully. The people who are running the school system are doing a fantastic job. But the financial situation and the retail businesses in Lakeland simply cannot afford this bond. And I will frankly do anything within my power to see that it does not come to fruition. If it does, uh, we have a second home in Florida. <laughs> when my wife retires in 2020, uh, I think that's where we'll be heading. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I understand everybody has their own views of this matter. But I think practicality must rule in this regard. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. Uh, next up, Melanie Mays. My name is Melanie Mays. I live at 4042 East Fur Hill here in Lakeland. On January the 17th, 2019, Chief Benson came before this board with all of you present and said, and I quote, Shelby County Fire Department has intentionally delayed having a fire class waiting on Lakeland to determine if they are going to start a fire department. They have not been able to hire or promote firefighters and paramedics because they are still waiting on this board to give them an answer. That was January the 17th. It is March and they are still being held hostage by three Lakeland commissioners. Josh Roman sponsored the resolution to delay a decision until January 1st of 2020. He stated his rationale was, and again I quote, $900,000 of profit. Everyone knows that there is no profit in public service. Well, real public service. 
It's like buying groceries, you get what you pay for. He also stated that he finds it exhausting to keep hearing about the citizens' vote. This is off the topic of public safety, but I have to say that I cannot believe that he said that out loud, but I 100% believe that he meant it. Michelle Dial, you stated you needed the extension so the mayor could bring you data and you could educate yourself on the topic. The fire department was one of two major issues in the election in which you just ran. Mayor Cunningham stated that he had the data and ran the numbers preparing to run for office. Did you not research this issue? I did, and I saw both of the um, fire studies that Chief Benson presented, so I wanted to know what the mayor knew that we didn't know. Okay, even still, there were four weeks between January the 17th when Chief Benson told you the impact of the delay of this decision and February the 14th when you again voted to delay it. Did you not think that public safety of Shelby County citizens was reason enough to research the issue yourself if you had questions? Wesley Wright, in reviewing the tape, I cannot ascertain why you voted for the delay. The three of you went to great lengths to research and present a PowerPoint in that same meeting about garbage, literally. What are the consequences of your votes to delay this decision and impede hiring and training of Shelby County firemen and paramedics? The National Fire Protection Association and the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health stated that short staffing and inadequate training cost millions in on-the-job injury and has contributed to the deaths of, of um, firemen and paramedics in the line of duty. Furthermore, I've been a certified ER nurse working closely with firefighters and paramedics for 25 years. I can tell you thousands of stories about the impact of all first responders on patient outcomes. Some are miracles and some are tragedies. I will summarize all of the actual events like this. The first step in survival is the rapid, immediate response of trained, experienced first responders. They are the first link in the chain of survival and the difference in surviving versus continuing to live. What does that mean? It means that surviving with an anoxic brain injury in a vegetative state is not living. And if you think that that cannot happen, then take a field trip with me. Come and walk with me one day in that emergency room and see the outcomes of these patients. If you don't want to do that, ask anybody that you know that works in EMS or in healthcare about how critical it is that people have access to emergency care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mays. Uh, next we have Al Dean. Al Dean, 9070 Red Hill Drive. Been there for 26 years now, I think. And I'm very concerned. I spent a whole lot of hours looking at Mr. Roman's figures. I've looked at our financial director's figures. By the way, I didn't know until just recently, he was with PFM figuring out the last block. So I'm sure this gentleman knows more about that than anybody in this room. <laughs> I read his figures and studied them. And I thought, my God. Where's the financial stability for this town? Then it got even more interesting because I spent a few minutes talking to friends in North Lakeland. And you've taken a billy club and hit the hornet's nest because I can guarantee you they're going to de-annex. Now, if they de-annex, unless I read the numbers wrong, we're going to be missing about 1.3 to 1.6 million dollars of revenue. Now, you want to buy a 38 million dollar bond. What are you going to pay for it with? The only thing you can pay for it is to say, okay, uh, we was only going to raise your taxes at a buck, a hundred. Now, now we've got to go about 250, a hundred, because we don't have the revenues number one, to operate the city, let alone pay the bond. So I think at least I know of three commissioners that need to get off their high horses and get out and talk to their constituents in North Oakland <coughs> and understand that because 
I can almost guarantee you it's going to happen because they have paid taxes for extended period of time now and all they receive from the city is garbage service which they pay for anyhow on their light bill. So they're really upset and I can't blame them a bit. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention is what uh, Melody Mays said. A couple of years ago, my wife was sitting in the restroom and her blood pressure dropped to 50 over 25. I was sure happy when Shelby County Fire Department pulled up in about two minutes and took care of her and got her to the hospital where she stayed in ICU for about three weeks. But that's beside the point. We have such excellent service. I think we're very foolish to want to screw that up. And also, how are we going to pay for it? Because I've already told you, you're going to be missing a lot of revenue. So I thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Dane. Uh, next we have Karen Parsley. <coughs> My name is Karen Parsley. I'm at 10238 Silver Heron Lane. Okay. For you that are for borrowing now to fund the high school, why, other than not having a vote on it, are you choosing a capital outlay note, which seems the very highest that we could go? I had some uh, questions for Commissioner Roman, but he's not here, so I kind of drove this out. At the February 14th meeting, he talked about hiring PFM to decide who was correct in the income projections and tax increase sums. Was this done? Did we have them get hired? No? Don't know? They did. They did get hired. Do we have a report from them? Okay. They're doing an analysis now, but we don't have any results from that analysis at this time. Okay. All right. Um, PFM was the same company that gave us income and tax projections for the middle school, correct? And do we know how correct were those projections or how far off were they? To be, to be fair and okay. to be clear, PFM never offered or opined on any projections that the city used in order to uh, project revenues or uh, expenses. That was not the scope of services okay. that PFM was engaged to provide in 2015. PFM only created schedules and advise on the issuance of debt if the uh, PFM, had no, <coughs> PFM had limited input with regards to what that tax rate was set at. That wasn't part of our responsibilities in 2015. I did re listen to the tape where the 55 cents was projected that was supposed to be set aside for schools only, um, which I don't think has really happened yet. But no. <laughs> Again, to be fair, there is a $0.55 cent property tax assessment that is uh, dedicated, that was levied for school use. However, that property tax was not specifically limited only to property to uh, school related uses. So in the event that that property tax was more uh, than sufficient to cover the debt service associated with that school, the money that is generated from that 55 cent property tax increase could be used for any uh, city service. Correct, as long as it's appropriate. I understand what you're saying. I said it was just in the meeting when that first came about, it was going to be uh, what was the Um, Commissioner Ron, you know, they say anything on social media will just come back to bite you. Uh, I pulled up your website for when you ran for like commission. 
And I'd like to remind you of a couple of statements in there, which I'm sure you do remember. One of them is on the pro school, and believe me, I am pro school. I want us to have a school. I want us to have a good school, but I also want us to be able to afford that school. You wanted to seek avenues to fund a high school through sales tax and other means, not property taxes. And to go on, you did say, no new taxes. To gradually reduce the current tax burden and to allow commercial development to financially lift city burden. With the con or other loans, there are going to be higher taxes. So, All four options have higher taxes, essentially. Like different levels of higher taxes. Different, yes. Okay, so I just want you to think very conscientiously about how you're going to buy those knowing what you promised your constituents. I thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Thank you. Uh, Next we have Mark Lawrence. <coughs> Good evening, Mayor, elected officials. My name is Mark Lawrence, 9202 Salem Road. Uh, I'd like to echo the statements of Mr. Lanchial and Mr. Dean. Uh, I am certainly not uh, against the high school, currently pursuing a PhD, currently have a son pursuing a master's degree. I've uh, been a citizen of Lakeland for, I guess, the last seven years since we were annexed, and I've actually been out here for 25 or more. Uh, I don't think we're ready. Uh, in my background, I spent several years with the Economic Development Commission. The foundation has been laid with the Lake District. We have our shopping center on Tick, but none of that has come to fruition. In order to actually finance a school expansion, ex uh, a fire department, uh, the continued improvement of our roads, a sewage system, which I haven't even heard mentioned tonight, we have to have some level of income. We cannot continue to just spend ourselves into deeper and deeper debt. Um, in regards to the fire department, yes, we are currently paying the city of Memphis $800,000 a year, I understand, for fire services, but that protects all of Lakeland. In order for the city of Lakeland to provide a fire department, one fire station and one fire truck isn't going to cut it. Uh, as we've talked about you know, with our Lakeland 911 folks here, I mean, we've got to provide services to all citizens of Lakeland north and south, not just Central Lakeland. So, in echoing, I think, the statements of many, many citizens, we're for a high school, we're for a great education, I commend our school board on the elementary school and the middle school, but we're just not ready for a high school yet. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Uh, next, uh, we have Lou Melton. Melton, 9584 Pine Point Drive. My speech tonight was directed to the three commissioners that have majority that voted to delay the Lakeland Fire Department, which is Roland Dial and Wright. I too have a family tragedy that I'm not going to spend the time to um, tell the entire story, except for to tell you that my brother was harmed, hurt in a car wreck, and it was a small town. They only had two ambulances. And um, there were four people seriously injured in the wreck. They took the three that they thought would survive and left him. A um, good Samaritan came along and picked him up and drove him 60 miles to Mobile, Alabama. He made it and was a paraplegic for life. It changed our entire family. We managed to take care of it without judgments, without financial ruin. We took responsibility for it. But it was a town that made poor decisions for their residents. They couldn't take care of it. Had, it, had the accident happened somewhere else, it might have been a different outcome for us. The same thing could happen here in Oakland on the rural road. I want y'all to think about that. Vice Mayor Roman in his presentation for funding Lakeland High School revealed that Lakeland used our savings to pay down debt in order to lower the monthly notes. The presentation for Lakeland Fire Department revealed that you must spend $1.6 million of our savings in order to, for startup costs. 
So somebody needs to explain to me, preferably one of y'all too, since you're for this. <laughs> how can you spend the same amount of money on savings that you got for the school and for the fire department? Everybody knows that the level of service that's provided for a new fire department is dependent upon the local governing officials. And Lakeland can't afford to duplicate the same level of service that Shelby County Fire Department is currently giving their residents. While we understand the desire for Lakeland to have their own fire department, it appears that the three of y'all can't decide which project takes priority here. Public safety and the citizens of Lakeland seem to be the pawns in y'all's political game. How can you keep voting in good conscience for the delay, knowing that we can't afford both of these projects without additional tax increases or fire fee increases and lowering of services? Not to mention that you're not being good stewards here, currently wasting funds on consulting fees, and not to mention the staff's man hours over and over again. I mean, um, just simple things like running um, employment ads, interviews, looking at resumes. We're wasting time here. You were elected to work for the people and represent them. With our limited resources, this board needs to focus on one project, determine its priority and affordability. Now, can you explain to me, or can you explain to me how we can use the same funds that are in our savings for two different projects? I asked a question. You can't, you don't know how. I don't have to answer any questions during public discussion. If I uh -oh. Do you wish to answer them, Mr. Murray? Do you understand my question? I understand. Okay. That's the conversation I'd like to have with the mayor about if there was going to be a little compromise. That would be a good compromise. Yeah. If we're going to talk about one project we need to focus on, okay. that would be the high school. But everyone would have to be. But you do understand that, you're, that it's misleading the public here. The same funds are being used, discussed on paying down debt, and it's also being used to fund the fire department. We can't use those same funds here. You know. Okay. Thank you for your answer. Thank you, Ms. Bell. Um, we just have a few left. Um, Andre Nolan. Yeah. <clears throat> I didn't actually plan on speaking tonight. I made a couple of minutes ago. Andre Nolan, 9439 William Little Drive, directly across the street from Ms. Melanie right there. I don't profess to have anywhere near your expertise in the emergency management field. However, um, I'd like to point out a couple of things. A couple of weeks ago, we were talking about finances. Uh, there's a city manager there. I'm going to call you out. You quoted $2 million as the fire fee that Lakeland was currently correcting, collecting. Is that correct? $2.2 uh, million. Two million. Two million. Okay. So let's just use $2 million because that's rounding down. I'm a big fan of rounding down. 20% safety. That's what we always call. I'm in the entertainment industry, so like, if I'm not being entertained, I'll throw rocks at me or something. Um, we always round out 20%, okay? So if I hang something above your head and it weighs 2,000 pounds, I can pick up 2,400 pounds minimum. So I'm rounding down. I'm good with my two million. Mr. Mayor, 10 million. Your five-year operating cost, correct? I'm not calling you out. I'm just... If I'm wrong, yes. you don't have to answer in public. No, no, I don't mind answering that's rough. That's <laughs> rough thing, absolutely. Give or take. I stand by that. So, five years from now, five years from now, gentlemen, ladies, everybody here, where would we like to be standing? Would we like to be standing here saying, hey, here's our shiny fire department that cost us $10 million at zero cost, well, at $10 million cost, or would we like to be standing here saying, here's Shelby County's shiny truck, that cost us $10 million. That's the problem. And I, I agree with the delaying thing. I absolutely agree with you. I do not want to put any of us in danger. I don't want anybody's house to burn down. Um, I don't want a fire rate to go down. 
I don't want any of these things, but I do want everybody to understand who's sitting here right now that you're not spending your money out of the general fund. You're spending our money out of a fire thing. If we can use that to invest in the city of Lakeland and make it a better place to live, we should do that. And that's aside from what you do for the schools, it's aside from what you do for the sewers, and it's aside from what you do in the general fund. It's taking this money and allocating it to a fire fund. Yeah, we're going to have to borrow from the city. I grant you that. And I'll take your figure, which I believe was closer to 2 million than the 1.4 or 6 that was quoted. I don't see how that's a bad problem if we repay that back over that five years. I don't see how we hurt the city. Uh, a couple more comments. I know I've exceeded my two minutes. Uh, we paid $3 million to do a fire station here. Up here. The city of Lakeland paid that money, just if you didn't know. We took a bond out to do it. So we like $1.5 million on that bond. Okay, so we're paying $2.2 million to provide fire service. You guys have alluded, just, you just alluded to a second ago, we need a second fire station. Who do you think is going to pay for that? We, we are. Three million dollars, or five million dollars, or whatever it costs to build a fire station, we're going to pay for it. They're not, and we're still going to be paying up two point two million dollars a year for. I'm not going to say not good fire service, but essentially a fire service that costs less than a third of what we are currently paying them. That's not to say that we can't do it, or we can do it, or the figures are right, or the figures are wrong. It's when you understand. Five years from now, when we're standing here having this conversation as we kick the can down the road, that we you, not the city, not this gentleman, we will spend $10 million in our personal fees, just like trash collection, just like everything, but we will have absolutely nothing to show for it. Um, I'd like to make one other point, which is you stated earlier on in the, in the local, uh, local newspaper, that uh, managing and funding a fire department over time will have an effect on our needs for infrastructure, blah, 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 blah. Exactly. Right. They don't. Yeah, they do. At that $2.2 million fee, we should be able to cover it. And if it takes us six years to cover it, it takes us six years. And if it takes us seven years, it takes us seven years. But every year we kick this down the road, it's $2.2 million we give to somebody else and we do not invest in the city of Lakeland. And that's the simple choice you're eventually looking at. Is at some point, when do you say, I'll stand up and be a big boy and look after myself and pay for my own services, rather than paying someone else and losing money? I'll tell you when, when we get when the commercial and commercial taxes in this city substantially increase. Right now, everything we do is basically on the bill that's paid by a rooftop, to include our fire fee. But keep in mind with the fire fee. Your fire fee is here. Here again, now my fire fee is paid on your utility bill, and everybody in the county pays for it. Yes, Lakeland pays 2.2 million of the chunk. That only goes to the fire for the, the county for fire protection for fire protection, and you're getting nine fire departments, nine fire, fire, nine fire stations to support you out here. You're going to get one with your labor fire department, one fire truck. Yeah, one fire boss coming. Uh, okay. We're going to get that one Lakeland fire truck that we currently have. What stops Shelby County from moving that fire truck? Absolutely nothing. We have no guarantee. No, we got to buy our own fire truck. Yeah, it's not Shelby County. Got to buy our own fire truck. What would happen to shut the county and move that fire truck? I mean, we'll do the what ifs. If, we, if we're allowed to do the what if, what if, if we're allowed to do the what if Shelby County removes that fire truck from that fire station. Which they would they're, 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 they're not going to move it. That's what we're paying for. They're not going to move it. They're not going to move the truck. We're paying them to provide fire service. That's why we're there. I, I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nolan. Appreciate that. Um, next, we have Dee Tipler. <laughs> I'm Dee Dee Tipler for the 9319 North Fern Hill Drive. I'm going to be short and sweet. Why are you pursuing a con when you know this is the most expensive option available? Do any of y'all have a 40 year loan on your house if you choose not to do the con or because you can't get the con? Now you're looking at doing a 40 year loan. Do either of y'all have 40 year mortgages? Do you have any schools around here that locally that have done a 40-year mortgage? Why are you looking to push this? Why are you rushing it? Why can you not compromise with Mike? He's asked you to compromise 
and we may not have these high taxes. Thank you, Ms. Dimmer. Uh, and last but not least, we have Mr. Michael Green. <laughs> My name's uh, Michael Green. I live at 9460 Trotter Drive. Uh, it's in North Lakeland. I'm not coming up here to fuss about schools and uh, claim out ditches and infrastructure and et cetera. But I have a couple questions for each of you guys. I mean, I know the answer for two of you because I know you very well. Two kind of people in the world. There's leaders and there's followers. Which are you? Are you a leader or are you a follower? Because on this board, you represent all these people out here. Not as five people, but as individual leaders of a city. And some of the stuff that's going on in the city, it's embarrassing. You know, I know we can sit here and debate, and I mean, we have some school board members in here tonight. I don't believe anybody in this whole room is against kids being educated. I have a daughter in Arlington High School right now. She gets a great education. It would be one thing if she was out there dealing with gangs and drugs and non-stop in the hallways every day. But she's not. And y'all know that, especially if you, you're a school teacher. So I don't know what the deal is about having to push through a school like now, when this city financially is not ready for it. Now, I'll tell you, if we had the money and we were not spending, not needing to spend money on stuff, and, and everything in this city is just rolling along and great employees, great everything, but we don't. We have part of the city want to quit being a member of the city of Lake. Matter of fact, almost a quarter of the property taxes for the for your budget, our budget, to run the city because they don't want their taxes to double because we've been paying double taxes essentially. I know I have since I moved here. I just don't know any better. But you're fixing to double it again because we have zero service. Our garbage can that we pay for, by the way. Think about that. But most importantly about the fire department, the no one guy over here, no disrespect to you. I've been in the fire service for 25 years. And for you to say that you want to compromise whether or not we do a fire department or we don't, depending on whether or not these two guys support a school. I know 1,800 firemen that will kick you in the teeth because that is so disrespectful. I personally have four people out of home that I don't even know. And you're willing to compromise public safety for whether or not these guys support a school that we don't need right now, what I said. You said it's a compromise between fire department and school. Did you not? Not compromise public safety. That's twisted. All right. Answer, then tell me what you meant. Doing the school now. USDA As opposed to what? As opposed to waiting, which is what the mayor is proposing, waiting on this. No, no. She talked about the fire department, and then someone said, I've been telling stating stating the far loop, stating whether or not basically doing two projects at once. Instead, let's focus on one and let's make it happen. Uh -huh. Well, then you said it's a compromise. So you're willing to compromise public safety? No. Yes, you are. You're, you're if assuming, you three voted to have the fire department now, you're assuming that us having a Lakeland fire department would be so hard. It will be so hard. At this point, there, are, there are experts that disagree with you. That's all I can say. Where's that he's expert at? He's not here because he's teaching a class tonight. Yes. Now I come up that expert. Not not expert. expert. <laughs> Chief Wolf. Well, okay. That's all. Where is Chief Wolf? He's teaching a class, that's what I mean. No, no. Is he an employee here? No, he's the MTAS expert. People, we were allowed I know who Chief Wolf is. Is okay. he the chief? He could have been. Is the chief, yes or no? 
We rely on MTAS for counsel. That's not what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It's Chief Wool. That's all I'm saying. The Chief. Yes or no? That's all I'm saying. It's not in here nor there, Michelle. So it's not here or there. Either you're an employee of the city of Lakeland or you're not. Either you're a commissioner or you're not. Either That's, you're a leader of a city or you're not. That line of Which logic does not actually make sense in this. That's all I'm saying. Is Chief Wolf the chief of the Lakeland Fire Department? Yes or no? He that is that doesn't matter. Then, 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 then. He's not the chief. Okay. We can go back and forth. So the answer is no. Let's agree to disagree. Agree to disagree. <laughs> I'm asking a question. the question. I'm actually having a discussion which I think that's something you guys appreciate. I'm getting plastered for that. So I'm not plastering you. Blasting I'm you. asking no, you a no. question. No, no, you're grilling me for something. I said, no, he's not the chief, but he's the EMTAS expert on fire he services in Tennessee. State. Yes, I'm we saw his counsel. I'm, I'm asking, saying, is he the chief? I'm you saying see? you're questioning his wisdom and knowledge as being the fire service expert for EMTAS. That's no, all I'm, I'm not questioning. I, I think know you Chief are. Wolf personally. I think you are. And That's let me tell saying. you this. When I I'll campaign, listen to me for one second. I'm when sorry. I campaign to be a commissioner for this city, I know Chief Wolf personally. And I went to him and I told him, Chief, if there is a man that can do this job, it's you. I campaign with that. You can ask anybody in this room. Okay? I know him personally. I know why he's not here. So my question to you is, if you're wanting to support a fire department, and he is all these great things, which I'm going to agree with him on that, because he is a smart man. But if he's so smart, why is he not here right now? I think he answered that in an email. You can read about it online. Okay, I'll go with that. Okay. But I'm going to agree to disagree with you. That sounds fun. But you guys remember, are you leaders or are you followers? Do you represent this city or do you not? And my last question, I'm going to sit down because I'm going to pass my two minutes. I'm going to make this real fast. Wait a minute. <laughs> what are you going to do if North Lakeland de-annexes with your budget? How are you going to pay the bills? Have you thought of that? I've thought of many things. That's a lot of hypotheticals. That That's not a hypothetical. Well, I got people. Let me tell you this. That's I don't a matter of a feasibility listen. study. That's I don't want. Sort of I don't want to necessarily be in next because I love living in Lakeland. Okay. Let me. I'm <clears> saying <throat> that. But my thing is, is we are all Lakeland. Everybody in this room is Lakeland. You know, this young gentleman right here came up here and said, "Look, he's just concerned. This is not a great time to push for something that we don't need at this moment." That's all I'm saying. Think about that. Be leaders. Don't look at each other like you're trying to figure out who's who's giving the answer. That's all I'm saying. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Green. Thank you. Uh, I do have one other card that was brought up. I think it's Agio. Agio. Agio Pi. How you doing? Uh, thanks for this opportunity. I'm new in Lakeland. I've been here for a couple of years now, and. Uh, the reason I moved to Lakeland, it's because I, did, I do believe this is a nice town. Uh, the, the, I'm a financial planner. I've been in business since I was 22 years old. Obviously, I'm foreign. So I moved here to have a better life and to give a better life to my kids. But to be very honest with you, Mayor, when we, and I'm talking we because I represent few investors, and when we try to make a decision for investment, on the city that don't believe in itself, and that's, it seems, the case here. People don't agree, and all this hypothetical uh, uh, suggestions really scares investors. And if you want the money to flow in for taxes, the city needs to believe in itself. So if the city don't believe the things that they're going to do, money will never follow them. Money follows money. That's how it is. I've been on the financial business since 1996, and believe me, to make it to America, being a Southern American, it's a dream to come true to us and to my family, especially because we're here legally. We've done everything that is supposed to do, 
and we want to grow. And I want my kids to have a great opportunity. And to see people fighting over a high school because they were scared of the, the loans, I'm sorry, but all of us have mortgages. And if you if you pay your house uh, in full at once in cash, good for you. But that's not the reality of the Americans. Most Americans do leverage, and that's why the banks are full. And I do believe if y'all don't believe on your system, if y'all don't believe in your city, if all these fights going on, people will not invest here. You're not going to have any tax money because you're not getting to an agreement. And that sends a really bad sign for people outside. I know I came here to invest, and I do invest in properties, and I do invest my money in my clients as well. And we're looking for places to invest, but not when we see a whole city fighting over a high school. It's just a school. And, for, and, and I understand people are concerned, but if you wait, just think about when you got married. Did you have a house? Did you have all of your dreams all set up? No, you built those things. But you built with someone, not being fighting over things. And I, I truly believe that uh, you folks, and I'm a descendant of Americans, and people, uh, I always heard about these brave people that conquer things. That doesn't seem to be the case here. Seems to be a whole lot of people scared of the future. And reality is, we don't even know if we're going to be alive tomorrow. So if the numbers make sense, I heard uh, the chief talking, and he is an expert. So for us to question the expert opinion, so why do we have an expert then? Why do we hire all these uh, experts to talk to us about these things? When you need a doctor, you go to a doctor. You don't go to your mechanic, ask for his opinion. So we can question these things. And to be honest with you, uh, this subject is really getting tired for everybody. And I see people actually fighting between the neighbors. And this is really, really bad for the image of the To me, it's easy. I can just jump on a car and move to someone else. You guys are going to, some people have been living here for their whole lives. This is you selling you really bad but at this point. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, we have reached the conclusion of public discussion. Uh, let's move on to sewer commission business. Do we have any? No. Check that one off. Um, I'll let uh, Mr. Everett, who has read. Uh, now that we're getting into the agenda, you would read the consent agenda and we'll move forward. I'll move for a meeting of mayors from previous meeting, special meeting minutes, February the 7th, 2019 minutes, special meeting minutes, February the 12th, 2019 minutes, and regular meeting minutes, February the 14th, 2019 minutes. All right, do I have a motion to bring this to the floor? Bring it. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? You think needs to be pulled from the consent agenda? Good. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. The ayes have it. Four, zero. Consent agenda passes. Uh, let's move on to the regular agenda items. Uh, Mr. Deborah, if you could please read uh, resolution one. Resolution of intent to proceed with due diligence on a capital outlay note on 38 years for a new Lakeland High School. All right, this is sponsored by Vice Mayor Roman. He's not here. Does anybody want to bring this to the floor or do you want to table? I move to table. All right. Second. All right, all in favor of tabling, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. All right, we will table that item. Uh, next item is an agenda item number 10, which is Board of Education Committee meetings. Board of Education Uh, Madam Recorder, if you would uh, read Resolution 2. Resolution authorizing the receiving a resolution and agreement associated with the creation of the Lake of Fire Department. All right, do I have a motion to bring this to the floor? Bring it. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Um, so we have a motion and a second, and the floor is open for discussion about the Fire Department. Here we are again. <laughs> we're going to be here every every 
your meeting until we get this thing decided. Um, I understand the concerns out there, but of all the things we this city, our own fire department is not what we need right now. I mentioned a while ago, we're paying for this city with roof, rooftops and little or no commercial revenue. And too many people in this city either refuse to, uh, to acknowledge that or they think that the Lake District is going to, is going to make it all right in five years, six years, seven years. The Lake District was supposed to be here in 2018 pumping out revenue. That was the original plan. I think we're selling timber over there now. The fire department we have now is not broken. I can't understand why uh, there's some folks who can't understand that. We have service from nine, from nine, with nine different fire stations in Shelby County. Um, yes, Chief Wolf is a very, knows what he's talking about, but, uh, but, but he has professional opinion. And just because he's professional and his opinion doesn't mean his opinion about Lakeland is correct. Um, you heard at the beginning of this meeting that we're about to go into our budget season. If we do not, I say again, if we do not stop this fire department, our city directors are going to have to budget for a fire department this year. It's very time consuming. With everything else we have to do to make, to, to make our limited tax dollars pay for the things we need, we've got to figure out a way to uh, get a fire department started, something we don't need. So I, I really, I'm, I'm at the point, well, commissioners, I don't know. I'm tired of the bargaining chip thing. It's time to do what's right for the city. We've got bigger things to worry about. And um, if we don't stop it today, tonight, I'll, I'll put it on the agenda for, for, the, for the next meeting. But it's got, we've got to put it behind us. When we have the revenue, when we have uh, more more uh, more homes out here that can help put the bills, then down the road maybe we we uh, we could do another fire department. But we also got to figure out how we're going to pay for a second fire department. The first one cost three point two billion. I think the next one's going to be four million. That you doesn't more than that. that doesn't include putting stuff in it. <laughs> That's for the bricks and the mortar and the metal. And the pole would slide down on. They still eat those money. <laughs> um, but that, I, that, look at the big picture. Let's put this to an end. I, I implore you guys. Let's put it to an end tonight and move on. And then we can we can uh, discuss the other issues we need in a more civil manner. Because I'm at the point that I think there's a little contempt. Of, some people have a little contempt about the voters in the city and what they said in November. They, Majority of the voters said they said no fire station and they said no high school until we can afford it. The mayor and I have decided to work with you guys to work it to work to make this high school work sooner than we thought we, we could do it. So we're we're taking a gamble. We're taking a big gamble here. Yeah, we're 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 playing our cards. I need the other commissioners to uh, think long and hard about this fire thing, but go away so we can concentrate on the things that you need. All right, I'll uh, I'll follow up with some with some just basic information. We pay Shelby County 2.2 million dollars a year to provide public safety, not just fire service. It's all inclusive. It is an all inclusive package that includes everything from dispatch, ambulance service, <coughs> nine fire stations, seven fire engines, two quints, which are the ladder trucks, one of which. They put down here in Lakeland for us because they're good stewards to Lakeland. They want to show us a little good faith. We don't just have a pumper in our station. We have a ladder truck to the tune of over a million dollars in value. So we're going to take nine stations, seven engines, and two quints. And we're going to say, we don't want you because we're going to spend our money on one pumper and 12 guys. You're looking I'm right, sorry. You're looking directly at me, so with respect, 
That's not strictly accurate because okay. we still have a then code service. Let me finish. We're through with public discussion. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll look at someone else. Look at me. Look at me. The problem is we are not comparing apples to apples. We're comparing apples to a whole orange grove. We cannot provide the same level of service for $1.6 million in operating costs. And oh, by the way, it just kind of gets glossed over that there's $1.6 million in startup costs on top of that. That's $3.2 million, okay? Simple math, $3.2 million minus $2.2 million in a year of fire fees is a million dollar deficit. You see where I'm going with this, folks? Okay, so now, we kick Shelby County out. We're Lakeland Fire Department. When Seek Tick over here, Lakeland Commons happens, we're going to have to have a second station. Chief Wolf said that. How are we going to afford a $4 million building? Arlington's struggling with their second station right now. They're looking at raising their property taxes 25 cents. And it's mainly because they're going to have to open another station because we're sitting over here to their west saying we can provide the same coverage as nine stations, seven trucks, and two quints with one pumper. And they know better. They're taking care of their people from a public safety perspective, period. Now, we go with this 1.6. There were tons of figures missing from Chief Wolf's numbers. They're not there. Let me bring up something from a maintenance perspective. There's never one cent talked about in maintenance of a fire truck. I got this from James Perry of G&W Diesel, which is a Pierce fire truck distributor and they repair service for Shelby County. It's really simple. You know how much it costs to do a brake job on a pumper truck? It's required to be done for ISO, rating prop, for, for ISO ratings every two to three years. It's $3,500 to do the brakes on a fire truck. You know how much a tire costs? They're $600 a piece plus installation. Now, when you do a brake job at $3,500, that's just the brakes. When you do that, you're required by ISO to replace every lug nut or every lug on a fire truck. You know how much a wheel stud costs? I am not kidding you folks. They are $500 a piece. And there are 10 on every wheel. Do the math. That's $5,000 in additional costs. I haven't seen any of these numbers on any of these projections. This is the soft costs, so to speak, that are going to bite us in the rump when we can't afford to do what we're trying to do to provide for this city as we sit here today. There's others. You know how much an engine replacement is on a fire truck? $65,000 to replace a fire truck engine because it has to be certified because it's a piece of emergency equipment. You know how much a transmission costs? It's $25,000 to replace a transmission and you can't just take it down to Coleman Taylor and have it rebuilt. It has to be replaced and certified. The irony in all of this Joe's Mechanic Shop can't do this. You have to hire an EVT, an Emergency Vehicle Certified Technician, to do the work. And it ain't cheap. So you want to talk about whether we can afford $1.6 million startup cost and another $1.6 in operating cost per year. And I think those numbers are very lean because when you look at Arlington's numbers, they're pretty close to $2 million. In a, in a year to operate one station with one truck. So I ask you, are we comparing apples to apples? Or are we just stabbing in the dark because we think we have this nice shiny thing that looks good? When in reality, it's not. And that's not everything on this list that I got. I mean, there are all kinds of other things. Every ladder has to be tested every year. $1,500 per ladder. You have to test your pump on your pumper every year. $500 a test. Guaranteed has to be done or you don't have ISO certification. So you can look at all of this other stuff. If you'd like, I'll provide it for you. It's just 
astronomical time and time again. We cannot afford to do this. And if you want to talk about a school, I'm going to draw a line in the sand right here tonight. My compromise that I talked about two months ago, if this fire department does not go away, my compromise is off the table. Period. I'm not going to play games with every citizen in this town's public safety. It's not going to happen. You mess with the wrong guy if you think I'm going to sit up here and play games. Because I'm not. This city and everybody in this city, whether you want roads or schools or whatever, you all deserve to be safe. And that's what I'm standing up here tonight and saying. I'm done playing games. Okay? The fire department is not what should be on our bucket list right now. I'm willing to work and compromise on this school, but if we want to keep playing games, I will take my compromise off the table tonight. I believe that. I am that adamant that we need to focus on the right things. So that's all I have to say about the fire department. Is there any other discussion? Oh, no, but I do want to thank you since I requested um, that other information that you were sending that you did have. So um, would you please forward all of that to sure. me? Sure. Um, and I appreciate you um, following through with that. And in the future, if there is other information on any item that we all have that the others potentially might not, I would like to respectfully ask everyone that sits in the chair up here to share information and make it make it known to everyone on this board what we all know about different different issues, whether it be fire school, whatever. Um, we need to be forthcoming with each other about information. Absolutely. And I do appreciate you bringing that all forward. Thank you. Any other discussion? Yeah, I appreciate the information. Actually, uh, you, you are the same as well as me. Uh, just to have a side-by-side -side comparison because there are some things that you guys are saying that Wolf did not say or said differently. So I would like to uh, look at everything sort of side-by-side -side instead of, you know, just be helpful to see all the numbers. I appreciate it. Yeah. There's one number you didn't mention, Mr. Mayor, was $91,000 for uh, the one service. That's what we paid in 2017. That's what we would have paid to Shelby County if we did not have the county fire department. We paid for that ourselves. That one thousand dollars. Exactly. That, that's what I mean by not comparing apples to apples. It's different when you're talking fire service and you're talking emergency service. What we get from Shelby County is all inclusive. There's ambulance. There's dispatch. Heaven forbid. There's hazmat. We live on an interstate. We also have a CSX train line that runs through our uh, our borders. So the opportunity for something hazardous to happen is there. And uh, I have sat down and spoken in depth with Chief Benson, and he's made it crystal clear uh, when it come when it came time to negotiating the mutual aid, he agreed that he would provide mutual aid, one pumper for one pumper. You get what you can send. But anything else they send, if we have a big fire, we're going to pay for it. That's something that was not said at this podium up here. It was not said. And Chief Benson made it crystal clear to me that he wants the people of Lakeland to understand, you go with this fire department, and I have to send more than one pumper truck to a fire, you will be getting a bill. And we will pay for that every time. Are you willing to take that risk to our budget when you know good and well we're struggling about money and all of these other things that I just listed, is it worth the chance? The risk versus the reward is not there. That's why I'm so adamant about this. I want everybody in here to feel safe in their homes knowing that Shelby County, who has provided stellar service out here long before Lakeland ever started being a city, that we want them to continue until we get to a point where we have the revenues that it makes sense for us to do this and step out there and take care of it for our citizens. So with that, anybody else have any comments? All right, Madam Recorder, if you would call the roll for Resolution 2, 
authorizing the rescinding of the resolution agreements with the creation of the Lake Environment Park. Commissioner Yes. Yes, rescinded. Commissioner Wright. Yes. Mayor Cunningham. Yes. Right, right, but if you, 
if you would observe how I post things, I think so many people that might align with you would agree. I try to keep, be very fair online. I don't bash people. Look at my post on decorum. <clears throat> I was asking for both ways. I even said, I said the mayor, my fellow commissioners. I said, people need to be careful how they speak about them and be respectful. That's all I'm talking about. Think about how you're talking about your city and how you're talking about things that could happen possibly in Lake. It's something we need to be very careful about how we say things online. Because you're kind of, you, our job is to, uh, it's to many things, but one thing is to sell Lakeland to developers or to people that want to move here. And that's one thing <coughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to preserve that because I think as a town we have some really great potential and we can do some really neat things. Um, but when you're bad mouthing either the leadership or just things in general in the town, people see that. Just pass that on if you're not watching online. Pass that on. It's something that does no one any good, whether wherever you are on the spectrum. That's just how I want to put that out there. Thank you. I'm just one, one, one Thank you. I, I agree to Wesley. That, that's where you go. But as commissioners, and it's gone back for five or six years now, there's a history of not listening to the voters. And I think as a group, as the five of us, we pay more attention to what the voters want, what they, what, what, what they, what they feel is important. It go a long way to settle things down. I think that the voters, for the most part, feel like they've been ignored. Uh, it started with the, uh, with the middle school, with the vote, and the middle school, and then, then the, uh, and the bond, or the, uh, the revenue bond. And um, there's a sense that um, no matter what they think or what you know, their feelings are, there, there's a group of people that think that we're smarter than you. I'm being facetious. But they think they're smarter than we are. They want to do what they want to do. So as the five of us need to uh, listen to the people out there. The answer's in the middle, and we'll get closer. To that. The solution's always in the middle. And I tell people that after the election. So uh, let's work toward that. I'll listen to them. I'll listen to folks on the other side, and they talk to me all the time. I can't answer them all. But, um, but the, I hear you. I hear you for sure. So, uh, Start doing that, I think we'll go a long way to settle things down the city and moving on to those things. Thank you. All right, let's uh, move on to resolution three. Ms. Deborah, please read that. Resolution authorizing the
we love our visual assistant. Yeah. That's a nice house. Yeah. <laughs> blue. Oh, I like blue. I like blue. That's my favorite color. <laughs> they will be doing um, some very minor improvements on 70 so they've been working with TDOT on um, creating like a B-cell, A-cell lane, um, B-cell resident A-cell acceleration lane. Um, it will, because of the location of the utility poles, um, it won't be a full you know, lane all the way through, but it will provide some storage for, for anyone who's going in and out of that road so, um, to get off of 70. So that's also included. Um, I don't th know that that necessarily is shown on the, the site plan. It's a little, just a little bell shape at the road there at 70. Yeah, that's, that's kind of, well, yeah, but it'll actually come out, I don't think it, yeah. Further out than that. Right, actually. right, I don't think it actually shows it on that side. Yeah, yeah, I was wondering about that shaded area, it's not, it's something different. I'll have to look at you. Well, then. I won't get the map. <laughs> well, while we're talking about deceleration, acceleration, all that, um, TDOT, uh, TDOT does have a long plan for widening 70, but it's like, way down the road, kind of thing. Well, that'll, so I've had some conversations with them recently, um, if they would support um, us winding um, to a five lane section, like what's in Arlington. Um, and there is interest from them. I think um, it's something that I put in the long range plan for the MPO, which is sort of where you start with that. Um, we would have to request, we'd have to work with TDOT, we'd have to request funding through the MPO um, for a project like that. Um, they did ask that when we bring on new developments, if we go on and acquire the right of way for them, so we, um, that's less that they will have to do, so that makes it a better project for them. Um, but they are willing to start looking at that, um, but that is sort of a long-term um, project, project. But I did um, share with them that the safety concern that I have with that, with Highway 70. And so if we would have you know, a, a dedicated turn lane all the way down the length. So it would be probably from Canada Road all the way um, into Arlington where it is currently five lane. Yeah, I was just saying that because I know people are asking about, you know, Kensington Manor and several of the developments besides this right here. It's starting to get where, you know. Um, yeah. I know, uh, Commissioner, you have to go into Creekside Manor. To turn, and then turn, to turn left at night. Yeah, yeah. It's just not safe in front of everyone. Just considering yeah, all the different things going on. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It, well, with Kensington, they will be widening right. Um, right. to include a turn lane there. Right. So um, we'll get there. It's just a, a process, and I've started talking to them about that, and um, and we'll just have to look at, at you know, when do we want to start that, getting that funding. While you're on the subject of 70, there's a fatality over the weekend elected residents. I'm leaving into my neighborhood. I haven't confirmed that yet. But, uh, but it, it's a dangerous road. My sister was granted by a police officer from another municipality one night. Um, be careful on that thing. It's busy now. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the hatched area that, that you were talking about, um, Commissioner Wright, is the sewer easement. There's a okay. sewer line that crosses 70 there. So that's the sewer easement. It's that hatched line. Okay. Um, If anyone um, from the public is interested, they can contact me, and I'll be glad to get it, get the information out. Or even after the meeting, I've got a couple of years. So, so this is just the development contract, um, which is sort of the next step. I've already reviewed their construction plans. They're um, they're really good to go. I've just asked for a few small things, and so the development contract, once that's executed, they'll be ready to start construction. All right. Excellent. What is your telephone number? My phone number. It's 867-5418, and that's my, goes to my office. 5418. And if, if you want email, my email address is on the website. Fantastic. I'm looking forward to it because I, I think I've seen the renderings and the proposals and stuff looks very, very promising. Mm -hmm. high-end development. Yeah. All right, do I have a motion to bring this?
this to the floor. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Thank you, Emily. That was a fantastic presentation. Um, let's just do a roll call vote. So. Yes. 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 Four favors zero against. Four zero. Motion carries. All right. If you would read us resolution four, please. Thank 
approving the 2019-20 budget calendar. Uh, Mr. Wright, you have the floor. <laughs> we, are just, uh, we approved the calendar, I think that was February 14th. We just uh, modified one date. That's the date that we will disseminate the uh, initial calendar to you guys for review. So that date originally was uh, 5 March, and now we shifted it to uh, 11 March. Uh, that's the only change that I've made to the calendar thus far. <laughs> On the 11th of March, you're going to be Correct. emailing it all. Correct. Yeah, you're, okay. yeah, you're and then, okay. Yeah, and then we'll meet on the 26th. Correct. Okay. So that still gives two weeks. I believe that's between, approximately two weeks. Between. Three weeks. Yes. Okay. Uh, and if you guys want physical copies, we can provide those as well. Um, I was just going to email them. Would like, I could want physical copies. Sure, we can do that. I have a pretty good printer. I don't want to do that. You can have some Just provide us all of them. Hard copy and we'll be good. It makes it easier to highlight, sure. to write on it, to make okay. notes about things that I'd like to discuss. It, it does yes, make it. It's got to be that kind of stuff. Yeah, I didn't consider that actually, so now I have to think about my formatting. But yes, we can provide hard copies to you guys. That's not a problem. And large enough that I can read them. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We'll find room to write, so don't worry about the margins. <laughs> So yeah, that's the uh, only change. Okay. So make sure you have physical copies. I, I assume we can. Uh, I don't know what the. I guess we'll get. We'll figure out what the best way is to disseminate the physical copies. But um, yeah, we'll just hand, we'll just deliver, deliver it to you. That's fine. Okay. Service for the courier. Yes. Service. 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 All right. Uh, motions on the floor. Any further discussion about the calendar? Oh, we need a motion I'm to get so it to sorry. the floor. I'll make the motion to get it to the floor. Second. And we've had discussion any further. We will uh, go ahead and we'll just vote on this. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. The ayes have it 4 0. Um, moving on, are there any announcements uh, tonight? Do I hear a motion that we adjourn? So good. Do we have a second? second? No discussion. Anybody? All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned.